how do we how do we start this? Um, okay, so our our family has been very much impacted by the California wildfire um, called the Mountain Fire, and we are under mandatory evacuation from the wildfire. And we have been since Bailey's birthday. Since Bailey's birthday. It is, so much has happened, so much has happened. I think I've been wearing the same clothes for three days straight. Same. We are safe, our, all, all of our kids are safe, our animals are safe. Getting us to safety was very scary and very, very intense and unexpected and just like, We're going to talk a little bit about California wildfires because I think there's a lot of misunderstanding across the country and maybe world. I always see people go like, oh, well, if they cut down the forests, like this wouldn't happen. And like, we don't have forests. <laughs> there are forests in places in California, like, I don't know, like Northern the, California, the redwoods yeah. and stuff. But it's not like when I drive around the East Coast, we have mountains with sometimes brush and then we have agriculture and we're surrounded personally by like a lot of agriculture and it's things like you know like lettuce fields the thing that really fuels wildfires in california is wind we have these really intense winds called the santa ana winds and on that morning there were 60 mile an hour gusts of wind the winds were very intense and it's a mixture of the wind and then what we call like dry fire weather so the the air is very dry we're not it's not humid so anything like any little spark like people will often often reference like a cigarette but if there is a downed power line from things like wind or in some cases something like arson and they don't know what caused this so it i'm not saying it was any of those things i do not know anything could have started this it was, it's more about the weather conditions of the dryness and the wind. The wind was really bad even the night before the fire started. And so we were out of power. Like we didn't, the, there was no power at our house. Yeah, and that rarely happens. Like that's the other thing too. Like it was a mixture of so many weird things. We had, it was, this is, the fire started the day after the uh, the US election. So we had the election. We were like learning about things like that late into the night. And then at around midnight or 1 a.m., our power went completely out. And it was super weird. Even in our neighborhood, power will go out around us. And we're one of the last neighborhoods to lose power. So it was just weird. And then it stayed pretty much all, out all night and going into the next morning with these occasional bursts of like it would go on. But I don't even think it was on for like any extended period of time. Like we had the elections and this eerie like all the power was lost. And it was just a very weird night and going into us, Bailey's birthday. So Bailey's like disoriented and it was weird and we wake up and there's just wind going everywhere. At some point in the morning, we got an alert that a fire had started. It is wild windy outside and there's a fire not too far from us. I can see the smoke from here. They have not evacuated us yet. I don't know if they will. out here right now and it was in an area where fires have started a few times since we've lived where we've lived when those fires are there we've always been safe it's it's been like oh man there's smoke in the air and like i hope everything's okay but it's mostly like it mostly affects like mountains and agricultural areas where there aren't structures um maybe like a couple structures somewhere like in a hill but like very rarely actually like burning a structure and mostly like they're protecting one or two structures and then maybe it'll go to another city from that direction but it doesn't ever go into where like our city it always goes away we always felt safe because there were so many structures between us and wherever the wildfire is that those you oftentimes take the priority the structures the the firefighters will save the structures and not just structures like we're talking about huge agricultural fields huge a big mountain range and a freeway like all of those things are between us and where those fires start typically yeah so we we're like okay there's a fire and anytime that happens we take it as an opportunity as parents to in like to educate our kids on fire like protocol like okay this is what an evacuation would look like so we were doing that but we weren't really doing it for ourselves like i was doing it with parker like he was packing a bag and he was like okay i've got my bag packed i think he even filmed himself doing it he definitely <laughs> did an older an older he fire. did an older one and i think he did it again yeah. but so parker's like 
going all out and and him and Duncan are both like packing blankets and pillows and I'm I'm saying absolutely not like put those things back we wouldn't need blankets and pillows like in an emergency like evacuation we don't even need it like maybe one change of clothes like that's not the priority like and we were talking about things that were like the priority and things that were more luxuries in an emergency so they were doing that and Gosh, I'm so I'm like already shaking. So because of the way that California wildfires work, I feel like you'll often see like bigger houses on a hill being protected in news footage. And it'll be like, oh, these mansions. And that's because houses on hills often just are more expensive houses. They have beautiful views. Um, people will get these big properties and and they're like beautiful. But there's a big risk because that puts you on the edge of a fire perimeter. So if a fire starts, it goes up those hills and not in neighborhoods and and goes for those areas. And that's why you'll see that on the news, like because of the fact that these perimeters and the mountains are protecting the neighborhoods and the towns. And we don't live in mountains. We don't live in a one of the big actual like mansion things that you I mean, we have a beautiful, wonderful house. We are so grateful for it and that it fits all of our kids. But we do not live in the fancy houses we, on the mountain. We live below those things in the town in a neighborhood. <laughs> in a yeah. neighborhood so for us we're like okay well for a fire to get to us it has to go through this whole zone of very expensive homes and then also into a neighborhoods and then to get to us so we felt a safety net from all of those factors so freeway mountain fancy houses neighborhoods us right <sighs> Sorry, I'm shaking from even telling this like this was this was something that was a very traumatic experience for us and for the kids. And that stinks to say, but it was really scary when it when it happened. I have some very interesting footage from it because we were prepping the kids. We were talking like, oh, this is what's going to happen. We hadn't had electricity to, all day. And in our heads, we were kind of like, you know, maybe to avoid the smoke that's going to probably happen. Even if it's just mountains, you get a lot of smoke. The air quality goes bad. We were smelling it in the house already. We were like, maybe we'll just end up going somewhere else and kind of like evacuating and staring clear up of what's going on we were thinking about that and talking about it and we decided around 10 30 yeah maybe that's probably what we're going to end up doing yeah, the today. air quality was not good at that point like yeah. everywhere you looked it was smoke so around 10 30 i'm thinking about things that we might ourselves bring with us and at that point i went to my dresser where my clothes were and i looked out our window which faces our backyard and um the the mountain the area where the fire was but again like keep in mind there's supposed to be a huge mountain behind us neighborhoods lots of space <laughs> before the it actually got to the fire zone but i was like okay i'm gonna take a little video and mostly i was showing the wind because the wind had broken a branch into our backyard and we were going oh my goodness i'm glad the kids weren't out there they're not allowed to play right now because it's so windy so i took a video that shows the little branch of it's little but it would have hurt if it fell on you like it was big enough that it was like whoa so I took a video of the branch and I look and you can see on the ground there's like a lot of debris from the wind over the night so there's like needles pine needles and stuff and then I scanned up to look at the sky and that's the side the fire was on and that is time stamped in my phone at 10 36 a.m the sky's getting a little bit smoky the smoke's like kind of a a more of a whiter tone it's not like black smoke. It's more of a haze. Like It's more of a little haze. You can only see it a little bit. Like I was kind of like, oh, this is it's silly even filming it. Like my focus had been the branch because I was like, oh, I'm going to show. I was thinking about like sending it to family and being like, hey, it's getting a little smoky here. Like what's going on with you? We might leave for the day. Like that was the reason why I took the video. I'm glad I have it because it so much happened so fast that um, it gives me like this memory of when when things were like where we were at mentally at that time. So at 10.36, the kids were asking like, well, is the fire gonna get to us? And I was saying, absolutely not. Like that would never happen. Our home is safe, you're safe. Like we don't have to worry about that. Like I was saying those things very strongly and very assuredly. It's partially to calm them down, but also because it just didn't seem likely. Like, yeah, it just that was did the not truth. Seem... Like the truth is, yes. Yeah. We're gonna pack and do our due diligence and learn about evacuating. 
And and we'll go somewhere where the air is better later in the right. day. And, like, and I, I still was like, oh, I'm going to take a shower in a bit. And, like, maybe I'll make myself some food. And, like, I was pretty relaxed about it at that time. And then it got... A, a little more intense that's where we were at and then i was like you know christopher why don't you grab the important things it is kind of seem a little funky i think maybe i read like an alert on my phone that was kind of like heading this direction and i was like huh so i think like around that point for some reason i was like you know christopher like let's let's get some let's get some real things gathered and so he started doing that and the kids were some of them didn't care at all. <laughs> and some of the kids were like very aggressively like evacuation packing and planning. And, and so I was kind of managing all the kids' different like thoughts that were going on. At 11.06, I went outside to the front for my first time. And it was because Duncan's bag was packed and he wanted to put it in the car. And I was like, I don't really want you outside. Like it could be a little smoky. I don't want that getting in your lungs. And then also it's really windy and their branches falling down. I don't want the wind. Like that's a big concern with us with our kids. Like we don't want any branches hitting them from outside. So I was like, no, I'll just go take it out. So I put it out and I looked around and it was getting smoky. So I, at 11.06, took video showing the wind and I did sort of like a 360 that showed in front of us where fire shouldn't go it should be like smoke going towards that direction um, and then I went behind you could see behind our house to the sky and I remember thinking oh it looks so much worse in real life you can't really see it as much from the video but like you know the my friends and family who I was gonna send it to like they'll get it and they'll see, they'll see that there's fire It was still white. It still looked pretty minimal, especially on the camera. It looked a little worse in real life. But and the smell was really bad at that. The that smell point. was bad. Like I was like, yeah. oh, I've got to get out of here, but I'm just gonna get this little clip really quick, and that way I, I have it to like show some people what was going on. I think I came into the house and I was like, Christopher, it's getting pretty bad. Like we should really get going. So at that point, we told the kids, Yeah, we're gonna get in the car. It wasn't like run to the car. It was just like, Yeah, go get your stuff. Like let's get in the, let's let's get going. And we didn't have any evacuation notices at that point no, not yet. there was no mandatory no warning nothing just kind of like a we didn't have our, our internet wasn't working our power was still out i it can was, see on my phone though like our, yeah. our phones had access to some like communications but but there was nothing other than that so i think the neighborhood was quiet too like i don't think other people were thinking that much about it um, because when I go outside and I'm taking those videos, you can see like there aren't cars out. There aren't like people talking like it was just kind of quiet. I'm so grateful that I walked outside at that point and saw that it was getting more intense because we were like, hey, we'll we'll start it up. And like kids start giving me your bags like let's we'll figure it out. And we kind of just started doing that. I'm going to show you the footage now because uh, I have a time jump where it's 1106 and then it goes to 1116 and at 1116. The footage will show you like black and orange smoke is pouring over our house. And the idea that that could happen, and we did not know why it was happening. All of a sudden it was just like over us. And so we didn't know what happened with the fire. And I think around that point, uh, I don't know. I think I saw, I think I saw an alert on like Twitter or some like social media site that said, it could go into these neighborhoods. And I have never seen that alert before. And I was like, if they're publicly saying these neighborhoods are now impacted, like that is a big deal. They're not, it's, it wasn't like murmurings. It was like, this is now the concern. And at that point I was like, we need to go. We don't know what is going. And it's like, it was the neighborhoods, neighborhoods, the town neighborhoods, not, not the hills, not the neighborhoods in the hills, like the town, all of a sudden black smoke. And I'm, we're getting the kids loaded. We got, we've to buckle Luke, buckle Teddy, make sure Rue's getting in the car and all this stuff while it's like very, very smoky outside. So and we're windy. breathing it in. I was running and breathing, <laughs> like, so breathing in like all this heavy smoke and I, and the kids were crying. So they were like breathing in smoke and it's also reassuring them too, like trying to tell them this is what's happening. You're safe and we're going to go as fast as we can. And like, it was just, it was a lot. Some of them were very panicked. Some of them were sad and confused. Some of them were just, okay, let's go. Like it was the whole spectrum of emotions. It's okay, baby. It's Teddy. Come here, baby. Come here. Come here, come here, baby. Come here. My purse.
at that point I couldn't find my purse. Like there were things that were like, I knew I needed to take and I, I left my purse because I couldn't find it. And you can hear me in the video going like, well, what about my purse? And I was going, you can see me going to the house and deciding, um, Christopher said at that point to me, I, you can't hear this in the video, but he said, no, there's a fire at the park. The way fires with the winds work is there's fire and then the wind can pick up burnt particles, the embers, and they become spot fires. And that's what often will make things jump a freeway or travel is like that ember is flying in the wind and land somewhere on a roof. And suddenly there's all these other fires that are popping mm -hmm. up and then they come together and it becomes yeah. part of the big fire. Our, Our house, house was between the main fire and this new fire that was starting up at the park. And a it was a little spot fire and really like the park I think was safe and all that. But at the time, like we're seeing these spots popping smoke. up yeah. in our exit. So I was just like, oh, I'm not going back in the house. And, and you can also see our house and all you can see is black smoke above it. So I didn't know if the fire was in our backyard. I didn't know if it was on our roof. I, you can't, because of the position of the hill and the mountain and where the fire was coming from, from the front of our house, all I could see was extreme black smoke and scariness. Smoke we was didn't... so big and black and moving so fast. And the wind and so was- so close to us. Like it just was, it seemed like it, it was a dangerous situation. And especially when you factor in looking at like 1106 to 1116, this is the change. We had no idea in that moment what was happening. We grabbed the living creatures and we left. Do we have every kid? <laughs> Like we had some stuff packed because we were doing this like prep, but overall, like Christopher and I didn't bring clothes. No. I brought, I brought two pairs of underwear because I was like kind of grabbing, I had been grabbing them earlier and I'd put them in a basket. So it was part of the basket that we grabbed, but like we did not get, we did not like do like a, a normal evacuation that we've kind of had the warning for in the past. Like we didn't even do that. We ran and we got in the car everybody's crying. I took video of like the park as we were leaving. You can see the like smoke over our house it, and it was so intense. And then leaving town to like black and like going and neighborhoods, just darkness and blackness and scariness. And, and was, the power was out. So none of the traffic lights were working. There was traffic. <laughs> Bailey described it as a, a zombie apocalypse scene from a movie and that's what it looked like and i know there was a lot going about also like it was her birthday and it was so sad but, like all of this was happening on her birthday she's like is our house gone like what's going on it was just it was very 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 emotional and awful we didn't we didn't know what was going on for a long time and now seeing other people's timestamps just down the street from us like a two minute drive down the street at that time houses on our side of the hill it seems like we're actively had been hit by an ember and we're on fire. It's, it's such a horrible thing when this happens. And it's like, there are people who were very affected, probably health wise. I don't know if there have been deaths yet or deaths at all, but I know some people have been uh, considered injured and hospitalized. A lot of houses burned down. And like, like this is not like, I, I don't know, for some reason I just feel I, like I'm seeing people in like comments and stuff talking about like California and this, these are neighborhoods, like regular people, neighborhoods, Yes, some wealthy people. This is not like fancy Hollywood Hills, whatever <laughs> celebrity homes though. They like, show this those is bigger like... houses on the news because it's a much more dramatic thing to show, but like regular small family houses, like they, And either gone. way, you know what? Those people matter too. Big houses yeah. and like they get hurt, they're yeah. humans. All of that matters, but also like, don't like separate yourself mentally from this by saying, oh, well, that was a celebrity or that was this. Like these are just their people, their families, their people who do not have any money or like additional ability to handle this. Like many people and neighborhoods in a town, just like your own, were very, very much impacted by this. And it's awful. And our house somehow is still standing. And it's our neighborhood. It's like right on an edge. If you look at the fire map, like that's where it is. That's where the fire pr pretty much came to and was stopped. And amazingly, like our house is still standing. We're not in it. We're still under a mandatory evacuation. There's still some risk. I feel like there's a lot less risk, but 
it is still considered a risky neighborhood. There's smoke damage and stuff like that that we'll have to be dealing with for a while now. It's not like you just kind of go back in and everything's fine. Some people might, but like it's it varies and we have to go through a process because of it. But there's no power in that area right now there might be some off and on like i don't that's the thing is like we don't know we we do know we're under a mandatory evacuation still water's been going off back and forth there were actually a lot of notices that you can't even boil the water they're like do not boil the water and use it don't drink this water and i think it's because something exploded into the water line in the process all these things happen that are just like these domino effects that's what's being navigated right now alongside with like a very active fire still there's containment they're working on it the winds have died down and things are i think looking at least a little bit more like manageable but there's still a long road to go with it we're still definitely under mandatory evacuation so we are safe we will keep you posted on what's going on our halloween special is gonna go up obviously very late this year (laughs) Um, which is fine. It's fun. It'll, it'll it'll remind us of a simpler time. And I should say we did a little bit for Bailey's birthday too. We had tickets to um, a show at the Pantages, which Christopher was able to get her to. I had to drive through the fire, like past the fire on one side and then past the fire on the other side, because the side that I went the first time closed down because the fire spread into it. And also they were wearing like the clothes on their back from escaping the fire, except for Bailey. She had a dress. So that was like a little bit of a, I think a distraction at the very least. I don't even want to say happiness. Bailey was honestly very devastated for her birthday and we're doing a do-over and that's that. But it was an extremely hard day for her and for all of us. There's a lot more to tell, but I wanted to share this sort of progression and also clarify a little bit about California wildfires. I feel like there's always misunderstanding when those are happening. And I, I just want... I want to remind people, there's so many awful emergencies that have been happening around the world because of weather and other incidences lately. Um, but just, I just want to remind people to have compassion and for any of those events. Like, And speaking of that, thank you so much to anybody that reached out and, and checked in on us. It really meant a lot uh, for us to see those comments and, and messages and stuff like that. So thank you very much. I want to say thank you for offers of help. I don't know. I honestly... <laughs> We probably need some help and we're not even thinking about it right now, but we are just like, we're kind of still in disaster mode, but we wanted to update you all and kind of tell you where we're at and that we are, the kids are safe, like things are safe. We'll continue to keep you updated as best we can. I put a little bit on my Instagram. He's got putting some stuff on his Snapchat um, and we'll see what else we put out. We are definitely like prioritizing focus on kids, family and survival. <laughs> but we'll do what we can to also keep you all updated. So thank you very much for checking in with us and we'll see you next time.